Um, Anne Rathke, here to my immediate left, is the telepharmacy coordinator of the North Dakota Telepharmacy Project at North Dakota State University. Through the use of state-of-the-art telecommunications technology, pharmacists are able to provide pharmaceutical care to patients at a distance. Telepharmacy expands access to quality health care to communities nationwide, primarily in rural, medically underserved areas. Dr. Lisa Feldner, who will follow Ann's comments, was appointed as the Chief Information Officer of the state by Governor Hoven in April 2006. As CIO, she oversees technology activities in state government education and ensures that the Information Technology Department of North Dakota meets the legislative responsibilities defi defined within North Dakota Century Code. Dr. Feldner is a member of the Governor's Cabinet and provides advice to the Governor on technology issues. Lynette Dixon is the Program Director for the State Office of Rural Health Grant Program at the Center for Rural Health at the University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences in Grand Forks. Established in 1980, the Center for Rural Health is one of the nation's most experienced rural health organizations. And I might add that Lisa and Lynette were both appointed by the Governor to serve on the North Dakota Health Information Technology Advisory Committee. Lisa Feldner serves as its chair, and Lynette Dixon serves as its vice chair. But first, we'll hear from Ann Rathke on the telepharmacy project. Ann? Um, thanks, Bonnie. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, being on this panel with uh, Lynette and, and Lisa, and, uh, and I'll just start us out. Um, uh, one of the biggest challenges facing uh, the profession of pharmacy today is the closure of rural community pharmacies. And uh, all too frequently, uh, we'll see scenes like is shown in, in, in this picture where a uh, community local pharmacist uh, has gone out of business. And uh, chances are, oftentimes, uh, that is not only the only uh, pharmacy uh, in the community, but often the only health care provider. So that can be uh, pretty, pretty devastating to a community that loses uh, that resource. And uh, it happens, these closures happen for a number of reasons, and uh, among them are just difficulty uh, recruiting and then retaining health care professionals in rural areas, and that includes pharmacists. And uh, also, there are uh, <clears throat> the difficulty is compounded by a national pharmacist shortage, and then that shortage drives up pharmacist salaries. So, for example, the College of Pharmacy here graduates um, about 80 uh, new pharmacists a year. Uh, it, it tends to look, uh, and they're just starting out in their careers, and it looks a lot more desirable uh, to go to uh, perhaps another state. They are staying in North Dakota more, but perhaps to another state, and then working in a, uh, you know, a, a Walgreens or a, a Target where you have an uh, eight-hour day, a, a, a very good salary, and you don't have the, exactly the same responsibilities as uh, a community pharmacist would have in a small town uh, to not only their community but the surrounding area in terms of pharmacy services. So uh, again, uh, by losing their local pharmacists, these smaller communities um, are essentially losing access, oftentimes losing access to health care. So th this is the story also in, in North Dakota. Um, just over 10 years ago, the, the Board of Pharmacy uh, surveyed the state, and they determined that 26 community pharmacies had closed within, say, the past decade or so. <clears throat> and um, another dozen were at risk of closing, again, for the, the reasons we talked about. Um, and um, so they sprung into action, I guess is the best way to put it. And the, the, the pharmacists in North Dakota uh, are... It's different than in a lot of states, I've learned, because they, the, the Board of Pharmacy, 
the College of Pharmacy and the State Pharmacists Association have a, a long tradition of working very well and collaborative, collaboratively together um, for the, the good of the um, field of pharmacy, but also uh, the patients. And they're known in North Dakota as the ABCs of pharmacy, the association, the board, and the college. So really those three entities got together and um, <clears throat> worked with the legislature to get state law changed to allow for telepharmacy. That was the legislative session 10 years ago uh, to this one. And um, through, through that, th then bef in fact, North Dakota was the first state to have their laws changed in order to allow for telepharmacy. Uh, there are now 20 states that allow for it. Uh, so then in 2002, after the law was changed, the Board of Pharmacy developed rules, first temporary rules that were then made permanent, uh, saying how do you do, how can you do telepharmacy uh, lawfully uh, in uh, North Dakota. And then that was the first year, that that's the year that the North Dakota Telepharmacy Project was begun, and that was the first year the project received a HRSA grant, actually through the Office for the Advancement of Telehealth, um, a congressionally mandated award that was uh, through the sponsorship of then Senator Byron Dorgan. So this is what this, the situation looked like, oh, I'd say about a year and a half to two years uh, into, into the project. Whoops, I, I, I need to go back. This is how it looked <laughs> a year or two into the project. And um, uh, the... Um, the gold uh, squares, rectangles you see there are communities that, again, had lost pharmacy services. We see those peppered around the state. Uh, and then the red ones were ones that were at risk of losing pharmacy services. And then uh, the green, green, green uh, rectangles are communities where telepharmacies had either been established or were in the process of being established. So the the, the the positive thing about this this part of the story is that some of some of a number of or most of the the squares there that that you see of being green were previously um, either gold or red. So the the, the um, project was already having an impact uh, in its uh, relatively early stages, and this is what it looks like now. And there are 72 communities that are involved in the project. Uh, 54 of those are retail, 21 are hospital. It started out as a retail project, and I think two or three years into it, um, hospitals law, the, the rules were, were amended to allow for hospitals. So, um, and uh, there are, uh, those uh, projects are located in 34 counties in North Dakota, which are 64% of those, and uh, there are two telepharmacies over in Minnesota, which are actually um, remote sites to a central site in Minnesota, excuse me, in North Dakota. And over 40,000 to date, over 40,000 rural citizens have had their pharmacy services either restored, retained, or established through uh, the telepharmacy project since its inception in 2002. And, and that really has been the goal from the start, is that restoration, retention, and establishment of those services. So um, uh, telepharmacy has established itself as a form of health information technology, and it's also considered a subcategory of both the fields of telehealth and telemedicine. And it really was made possible by the advent of all that people have been talking about here today, um, the wireless technology and infrastructure, the advent of that. And uh, it's really allowed pharmacy leaders in the state to pursue that, that goal of um, really keeping, keeping pharmacy services in small communities so that um, patients Particularly, I mean, we, we all would like to have, have local pharmacy services, but particularly the, the elderly or people that have, for what, for have difficulty for whatever reason traveling to uh, have to obtain that essential service. And we know that it can, it's not unusual for it to be a two-hour round trip uh, to be able to conduct your, your pharmacy service, to get your pharmacy services and... Um, that's not what we would prefer 
for ourselves, our folks. Uh, so <clears throat> um, you can see from uh, these pictures that the, uh, the, the telepharmacy, the telepharmacies, whether they're in the hospital, as you see on the left, or the retail uh, pharmacy you see on the right, um, that they really do look very much like the traditional pharmacies in those locations, including in both cases there's, there's a drug inventory. But the, the major difference is that the pharmacist is, again, not, not on site. Uh, but as, as uh, is noted up there, um, the, 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 the connection is via audio video links uh, and the visual verification and any verbal communication are in real time. And that actually also includes between the pharmacist and the patient. Uh, and that can be actually either in the hospital or the retail setting. It's, it's more common, in fact, it's mandatory in the retail setting that every patient uh, have that um, consultation, educational consultation with the pharmacist. And that's using the same technology, uh, at least the video conferencing component of it, in a private area. So uh, the, uh, the pharmacist and the, the uh, patient can be talking to each other just as if they were in the same room, just like the, um, the tech and, and or nurse do with the pharmacist. And then also the pharmacist verifies does everything that he or she would normally do as if they, they were standing side by side with that um, uh, other professional, the nurse or the, um, the tech. So, and again, the, the pharmacist retains responsibility for the whole dispensing process and is liable if there are any damages due. Uh, as a result of those process. So, uh, and due to the oversight provided by the pharmacist and that routine verification process that I already mentioned, um, the Board of Pharmacy actually considers the pharmacist to have dispensed the uh, medication um, and not the, uh, the technician uh, in the case of, of the retail or the I guess in the hospital it's, it's a, a joint uh, venture since it, then it is uh, uh, taken out into, um, and dispensed on, on the floor. Let's see. <clears throat> so um, again, the, a, a core component of the, the North Dakota Telepharmacy Project is that active involvement of the pharmacist in delivering those services. And again, um, I, I'm going to just let you look at uh, those responsibilities there. But um, the supervising pharmacist really does perform all the services that a, that a pharmacist does in a traditional setting. It is simply that it, is, it does it remotely. And then also um, the pharmacist will do at least at a minimum of monthly visits to the remote site um, as part of the, the supervision process. And um, uh, North Dakota has some of the highest standards in the nation for training pharmacy technicians, and that's part of what makes it possible for us to do this here and to do it as well as it is done. Um, again, um, I won't read all of the responsibilities, but basically um, they're the same thing that a, a a tech does in a retail setting, I guess, or a hospital setting too. Uh, the, o the, the only difference is through the technology, they provide those di digital images to the pharmacist for their uh, verification and approval. And uh, techs in North Dakota um, have to graduate from an ASPH accredited institution or have equivalent training, be registered with the board, and then because there is added responsibility for a pharmacy technician uh, in a telepharmacy, they have to have worked at least one year in a traditional pharmacy setting, um, you know, side by side with a, a pharmacist. 